Okay, so it's uh, 7.30, we have a quorum, and I would like to call the meeting to order. And I would like to start by um, repeating the um, governor's script that this open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with the governor's order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by, by email to Tara Bradley, T. Bradley at town.arlington.ma.us. The meeting is convening by video conference via the Zoom app as opposed as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note the meeting is being recorded. So um, some, some uh, members are uh, participating by video co conference and please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. The chair will invite members to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until you are recognized and your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you are not speaking, and please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Um, I hope this is the last time I have to say this, but due to the size of my laptop screen, I may not be able to see all the members at once. Somebody has raised their hand and I haven't noticed. I had hereby request that Tara Bradley or any LaCourt, please bring this to my attention. Finally, um, each vote will be conducted by roll call. Permit me to confirm that all the members and uh, persons anticipated on the agenda are here at the meeting. And I will begin a roll call. Please answer uh, that you are present. Grant Gibeon. Here. Shane Blundell. Here. John Ellis. He'll be absent. John tonight. Ellis. He emailed just oh. yeah. Okay. Micaiah Healy. Yes, here. Brian Beck. Harry Padaria. Here. Sophie Migliazzo. Here. Jonathan Wallach. Shailene Crawford. Here. Daryl Harmer. Here. Andy LaCourt. Here. Alan Jones. Here. Oh, sir. Here. Bill Keller. Here. Al Tosti. Here. Wanda Nascimento. Here. Christine Deschler. He's still in Africa. Dean Carmen. Here. And David McKenna. Here. Uh, Brian Beck Thank is you. joining uh, now. Sarah Bradley. Uh, here, and Brian Beck is joining right I'm now. I'm sorry. Brian Beck is joining Brian. right now. I have it. I got it. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Um, let me make a couple of comments about tonight's um, meeting. Uh, it, I think it's going to be a short meeting. Uh, we have a few items on the agenda. Um, and I was, I was seriously considering postponing these items and, and not having a meeting tonight, but our next couple of meetings are so crowded that um, I figured that this was the safest path. And, and furthermore, um, you know, this is a little off the beaten path here, but watching the, the terrible and, and tragic war that's unfolding in Ukraine, and, and I've been there several times, is really very disheartening. And um, 
their suffering is, as are many other people in various places in the world, which is equally disheartening. But, you know, it makes us realize how fortunate we are to live where we do and, and participate in institutions like this uh, humble finance committee. So um, we will not review any minutes tonight because they weren't ready in time to give members a chance to um, peruse them in advance. Um, with respect to the last meeting, um, the Finance Committee supported the Warren article on the blue bikes. And although I didn't speak on the article, uh, I was opposed and I find myself in a position where potentially I'd be defending something which, um, with which I totally disagree and in which in my opinion, opinion flies in the face of my admonitions to town meeting about our upcoming fiscal crisis and the need for a large override. So therefore, um, since uh, Annie LaCourt spoke on the issue and, um, and also voted in favor of, favor of it, um, Annie, I'm gonna ask that you both prepare a write up on this article for the finance committee report and also be prepared to speak on it, supporting it at the town meeting should the need arise. Can you do that? I can do that. Thank you. Um, tonight, we're gonna to hear from uh, Sandy Pooler and Julie Wayman on some proposed uh, changes to the town budgets. You saw the emails on that. Uh, also, we have not yet received the draft warrant for the special town meeting, which I was hoping that we would get for, before tonight's meeting. Um, so I think we'll also ask Finance Director Pooler to advise us of the financial articles that we can expect in the warrant. We have discussed one, which is the disposition of some of the reserve funds um, balances. And, um, but there may be others. So perhaps he can advise us uh, on this tonight. And so we can also plan when we have to deal with that warrant. With respect to the changes in the budget, um, I'm gonna ask Wanda Nascimento to move reconsideration of the health and human services budget in order to address the issues being raised by Sandy and Julie. And in addition, I'm gonna ask George Koser to move reconsideration of the DPW budget because there's a re related issue there. Um, I just like to remind everyone that um, it, re reconsideration according to our probably not well-documented rules of Robert's Rules of Orders requires or a two thirds vote of the committee. But by moving reconsideration and voting for reconsideration, it does not necessarily mean that, it doesn't mean that the changes are voted. We will still have a motion and vote on whether or not to accept that motion for a change uh, after and if and after and if reconsideration is approved. Um, and then I, I'll be able to give a brief update on the snow and ice budget. Uh, it'll be nice if we can get um, Sandy uh, Pooler to, um, to do that since he's probably got the more uh, recent numbers than I have. And um, we're also going to address tonight the warrant articles with no, with no changes. In, in other words, um, we have hearings for boards and committees that um, have asked for changes in their budget or who have a substantial um, expending limit, like for example, the, the water bodies fund. But uh, a number of the other boards and committees normally get a nominal amount every year to you know, run the parades or, or do the various things that they do. So we'll try to address all of those budgets tonight so that we have them behind us. Um, so uh, I suspect, is, is, is Sandy here yet? Let's see, Sandy and Julie. So Julie- Mr. Chair? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, um, Alan. I, I just wondered if you ever got uh, feedback and maybe my memory is poor, on whether the finance committee could just transfer that money from the reserve fund uh, directly into the override stabilization fund. Uh, thank you. Yes, um, I don't know if your memory's poor or my memory's poor. I, th I thought I might've mentioned that last week, but maybe I didn't. I did get feedback. And it turns out that um, number one, to put money in or out of the fund requires a two thirds vote of town meeting. And even if that was not a requirement or, or in addition to that requirement, the under the um, state law, and I have the, somewhere here I have the citation, oh well. 
it's not. Um, under the state under state law, the finance committee can only make transfers, fund transfers, reserve fund transfers to departments, not to funds. So um, we're we're doubly barred from doing that, even though that would be a nice, simple solution. Thank you. You're welcome. So oh, oh, just as a matter of record, also, uh, after we approved the increase in the re revolving fund amount last week, I did send an, uh, a memo to Mike Rademacher informing him that the Finance Committee voted for that. I just had that sheet of paper in front of me with um, that information on it, but okay. Um, <clears throat> so, is Sandy here? So Sandy is not here yet, but Julie is in the waiting room and um, she will be happy to join us when we are ready for her. Well, she can join us anytime. It's, it's an open meeting, you know. Oh, well, she, she wanted me to put her in the waiting room until we were ready for her. Oh, because she's shy, I guess, okay. <laughs> um, oh, here they both are, here they both are. Okay, good, we're ready then. Good, let's invite them in. So I can put down on our, our minutes here that Sandy and Julie are here. So uh, Sandy and Julie, just let me mention that you don't have to stand on ceremony and wait in the waiting room. You know, this is an open meeting. We're, we were delighted to have you here from the very beginning. You, we don't normally say anything um, that might be embarrassing or otherwise uh, troubling. So. Um, so I think I, I just mentioned to the, let me just uh, describe to you the process here. Uh, since we've already voted, and by the way, Julie, thank you for your memo and the backup information on these issues. Uh, since we've already voted these, um, these funds, uh, we need to move reconsideration of the budgets. So um, we'll first do that and then, um, and then deal with the issues. So Wanda, would you move reconsideration of the Health and Human Services budget? I move that we reconsider the Health and Human Services budget. Is there a second? Second. All right, so we have to take a vote. Grant Gibeon? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John L. Oh, John's not here. Um, Nakaya Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jonathan Wallach? He's not here. Um, Shailene Crawford? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Annie Daryl Harmer? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Alan Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Carmen? Yes. David McKenna? So, um, anyone have an objection if we, um, if I uh, retroactive? Uh, somebody said the name wrong. So, I think David's technology is struggling. So if, if we retroactively, George, if you just make that motion on the health and humans, on the DPW budget. I'd like to move reconsideration for the DPW budget. Is there a second? Second. Is there, are there any objections to reconsidering the health and human services budget? Okay, DPW. hearing that, I'm sorry, the DPW, thank you. <laughs> uh, any, any objections to reconsidering that? I mean, to vote to uh, re reconsidering the budget. So I'm going to assume that the roll call vote that we just took will suffice for both of us, save a little time. Okay. Okay. So um, the uh, changes in the health and human services budget are before us. So, uh, Julie or Sandy, who wants to? 
I'm forward here, Julie. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I think Tara had passed along to all of you um, the memo where I tried to outline all of the um, details, but I'll just walk through that quickly for you all. Um, so I know that Christine Bongiorno had come before you all last week to talk about the budget. Um, she had previously met with Annie. So thank you to Annie for uh, noticing that the um, wage offset was uh, down by $40,000. So um, that was... Uh, we had originally budgeted in the Council on Aging um, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs offset at 51580 And that actually should have been 96115000 dollars So um, we are coming to make that adjustment, but then um, being that we were going to um, come before all of you to, to make that change, we had made a couple of other changes that um, we had not had the opportunity to do so before we'd um, finalized this budget. So Health and Human Services um, has had the ability to fill their um, administrative assistant position uh, intern with an internal candidate. Um, and so this position um, was originally a step um, four or five, and this person's gonna come on at a step eight. So that was uh, an increase of $6,993. Uh, we, I all, did also remove the medical reserve core offset, being that we are already making the changes. I just removed that, and Jessica Kerr, her offset within ARPA just increased. So you, you didn't see any real change there, except we were just kind of cleaning it up. So um, we did res remove the medical reserve core offset. Um, so that was HHS. Now um, there were, you know, we get a number of requests from departments more than we can grant in a year. Um, but there were a couple that um, we, in talking with Adam, did um, look to to make an adjustment on. So within the DER, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Budget, um, the Select Board has recently endorsed um, the request from the uh, Police Civilian Advisory Board Committee to um, put together this Civilian um, Advisory Board. And so um, part of what they believe their needs are going to be is possibly some uh, technology, some programming help, and then also potentially some staffing help. Um, so we did increase that line within DEI. To, we added that line and added $25,000 for fiscal 23. Um, we did also add 15,000. Um, so then within highway, sorry, that's HHS. And then within um, highway under DPW, we added 15,000 to auto gas and oil. So um, while the DPW building is under construction, they do not have access to the fuel pump that they typically are able to um, use for their vehicles and to get a much better price on uh, gas. They are um, needing to actually pay retail at local pumps. And that has already been um, a much higher increase, a much higher expense than had been anticipated. So I was just looking at their um, spending now. They're already looking to, to spend beyond what we had budgeted for fiscal 22. Um, so we were looking to add 15,000 to this line for fiscal 23 to help with some of those that we anticipated increase in costs, which we expect until the end of the DPW building. So that's just outlining the changes, and I'm wondering if anyone has any questions. Before we go to questions, Julie, do you have um, this in a summary spreadsheet? Um, so, or, or else let's just take it a step at a time. Yeah, do you, you know what, and I'm happy to share my screen if you want me to show you um, what, what would be most helpful, because I've got, um, let's see. Well, I think we should, we should, first of all, parse the uh, difference, the changes in the offset, okay? Then um, the uh, proposed salary increase, which is a simple, is a simple number, um, which is like, what was that, $6,700? dollars nine ninety three. yep. And then, um, then the proposed, the next item would be the proposed increase in the expenses for the uh, Police Civilian Advisory Board, and then the proposed increase in the 
expenses for oil and gas and DPW. We want to take right. one, one at a time, okay? Sure. Okay. So here we have the 96,115. So this is the council and aging budget. And this was what had originally been 51,580. Um, so Charlie, you, we voted this budget as it reads now. Yes, I know. But, you, but you, what, what um, Julie wants to do is reverse that offset. And, and it, did you want to reverse it to exactly 51,580? No, no, no. We're, we're keeping it at the 96,115. This is the adjusted offset that you see on your screen. The 51,580, Charlie, I'm sorry, that was the orig that's how it shows in your manager's budget. Yes. And so this is the adjustment here. Yes. Okay, so, uh, so you're accepting the, the adjusted offset, but you're spending more money in the department. There were, yes. Yeah. Okay, but total, let's, let me just, um, what I'm interested in here is the total, um, total offset number. Dean, C Carmen, you're the whiz with the um, calculator. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the difference between the 51,580. Wait, where's the 51,580 you're looking for? I have 44,535, right? That's the difference. Is that is that what you're you're going to spend? No, Char Charlie. I think I think that the Council on Aging budget is as we voted it. It's HHS and DEI that we need to look at. I think Julie was just confirming that they agree and was had had. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. That that's correct. Um. Yeah. That's that's correct. So let me just see what else. Let, so the, I'm gonna see if I can pull okay, up. Okay, but you're still saying, so let me just go back to this subject. So we we in, we voted the 96.115, which was a, a larger offset than was in the plan before, correct? That's correct. So the total bottom line impact on the town budget by that change is still, $44,535. It may not be in that department, but that's the total impact of that change. Yes. Yep. Okay. So what is the um, the uh, the position change worth again? Was that six? $6,993. Okay. And then you were saying 25000 even in the... Uh -huh. And then fifteen thousand. Uh -huh. So the total is um, forty six nine ninety three, right? So the yep. So there had also been a decrease. I think you all had voted um, the IT budget previously. Is that correct? It's not on the it's not on the floor tonight. Not tonight. You had you previously voted on it though, correct? Yes. So that so so they, they so there was an uh, a change there of a decrease in seven thousand dollars. So that's why we had there we had still had a little bit of room within um, that movement that was beyond this uh, difference tonight that you're looking at. So that's why we were they, we were making up that forty thousand, but there was. Um, also room within our, our original uh, change to the budget that also, that we are also using to, to make up this $40,000. Just as a, as a sort of an editorial comment, I, you know, the, the finance committee likes to think that it's um, keeping the budget, the expenses down as opposed to making room for more spending. No, certainly. No, I, I certainly appreciate that. And, and honest, these were the, well, we get many, many requests throughout the year, obviously, but um, 
these couple of items were were ones that we were um, really trying to be able to um, grant originally. But I certainly understand the the goal of the finance committee. Hey. Um, so. Um, So what we, let, let me just make an explanatory comment to the finance committee and please correct me if I'm misrepresenting this. But um, due to prior budget votes by the finance committee, there were reductions in the total bottom line of the budget of approximately 47,993. And so what the finance department is proposing tonight is to increase $46,993 in spending. Actually, it wasn't, I said that wrong. It was 44,535. Was that, um, Altasti, you remember if that was a $1,000 even or Al? Sorry, I just wanted to take these one step at a time, and I was just going to propose changes in the Council on Aging with the with these new changes. I just calculated the numbers. Okay, what is what was the reduction in the um, in the IT budget? Seven thousand dollars. Um, hold on a sec. Uh, 7,000. Okay. So this is, um, so the, um, the budget, the total bottom line budget up until tonight was reduced by 57,535. And the finance department is proposing to bend of that Savings, so to speak, forty six thousand nine ninety three. Is that a correct encapsulation? Yeah. Okay. So um, the first thing we should do is address the. Um, so we need a motion to change the. That's the council on aging. That person. Uh, change change that budget by uh, six thousand nine hundred ninety three dollars. Is there a motion? No, that? it's the it's the health and human services budget, and I'll, oh, I'll make that motion, Charlie. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the motion uh, for the health and human services budget is made by six six thousand nine hundred ninety three dollars by Annie Lacour. Is there a second? Second. So it's moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? Al, you have your hand up. Did you want to say something more? Oh, I was just going to go through the numbers. That's, I just did the addition. That's all. Uh, well, if you want to do that, go right ahead. Well, the, the bottom line looks like uh, for that is $409,668. That's the revised number for the Council on Aging. No, the Council on Aging budget is not changing. The Council on Aging budget that we voted included the offset modification and is like what we're looking at on the screen right now is what we voted and what and and it's in line with what like this is the republished budget so julie correct me if i'm wrong but you're not asking for any change to the council on aging budget because what we did when we voted that budget was we took that offset number and increased it. It wasn't done on paper, but we did it as part of our vote. Am I making sense? Yes, and it's correct. We basically, when we voted that budget increasing the offset, we improved the bottom line of the total budgets by forty-four thousand five hundred thirty-five dollars. 
Yeah, this is only numbers. Sorry, Al. How about the 6,993 increase? That's, that is, that's in health and human services. No, that's in the health and human services budget, and we need to look at that budget to see how that works out. Let, 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 me, let me put it this way. Um, before tonight, the IT department, which has been mentioned here, and let's assume that no other budgets changed between the IT department and the um, Council on Aging modified offset. We, ha we have a lower total expense budget in across the town budget of $57,535, um, which, you know, we, we would, I could say we were planning to, to uh, give back to the taxpayer, okay? Mm -hmm. So now the, now the um, finance department is proposing three changes. One is the position change in health and human services to increase because of the um, step function of the personnel's personnel being uh, moved over there is an additional cost of 6,993. 6, They're also proposing an expense of 25,000 for the civilian advisory board and then a $15,000 increase in the DPW department for increased uh, fuel costs. So that all adds up to 46,993. And it's gonna, if I can use a vernacular term, it's gonna take a bite out of the 57,535. What, what uh, Annie just moved was the first step the 6,993 change in the health and human services personnel budget. Am I right, Annie? Yes. So we should go look at health and human services personnel if you can put that up, Tara. So here's the budget itself, but would you like me to put the salary page? Um, yeah, I think we wanna look at the salary page because the change is all in the salary page. It's... So um, so we'll, and then we can look at the master budget after if you'd like, because that does encapsulate the change as well. Let me just grab these. Okay, so here it is. So here you can see this was originally um, a vacancy. It was a step, four, it was a grade four, step four, five. Mm -hmm. It's now a step, it's now a step eight, and that's a difference of 6,900. I'm sorry, 6,993 dollars. Okay, but let me let me just walk through what I think are the other changes here. So sure. we've eliminated a part of the offset, the medical core offset that's going away. Yep. We've eliminated a position which was going to be vacant, vacant anyways, or in care's position. And, but we have hired the public health nurse now and we've added an administrative assistant who's very experienced in the town, Laura Munsey, and mm -hmm. she is going to cost us a little bit more money than was originally budgeted for that position here. So in total, you have adjusted this budget to reflect those changes in personnel, dropping off the medical core offset. And then was there also a change to the ARPA offset? What we did was take Jessica Kerr and the amount that she was offset within um, Medical Reserve Court, folded it into ARPA. Yes. Okay. What does what folded it into ARPA mean? So it was 0.4 and now it's 0.61. Now she's 0.61 through ARPA. She had been 0.41 as part of the Medical Reserve Corps, and now we've taken that amount and added it to our, what was ARPA, the ARPA offset. So you've increased the ARPA offset. With Jessica, but as you said, Annie, we did also um, remove an ARPA funded position, which was Ashley Jean. Okay, so Ashley Jean is gone. Care is still there, but we've offset more of her salary with ARPA versus Medical Corps. And we've hired Laura, which is a smart move, by the way. Um, and therefore, we have an increase overall in personnel costs of about 
6,900 something. Okay, and that's the change to this budget overall. You've got it. Okay. What is the change? Uh, what was the, the original uh, total personnel budget in health and human services? I could probably tell you that. In other words, the line where it says appropriation total. 842-986. For salaries. For salaries. Uh, that would be the number that is now 776-315? Yes. Okay. And then uh, what was the original uh, taxation total number on the far right hand side on the bottom? It was originally 558669. And it's now 565662. Wait, Annie, what number are you reading? I'm reading from the original budget book and I'm, I'm reading the taxation total on the personnel page. Okay, not not the total budget. Not the total okay. not the total taxation total, but the personnel total. So which which number are you reading? Um, so tax taxation total in the original budget. Five five eight six six nine. Okay, that's after the yeah. offsets. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think the biggest change here, Charlie, is to the offsets. Okay. So that even though we've had a reduction in the, the pre-offset personnel number, that taxation total is higher because the offset is lower. Yeah, that offset is lower by about thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, the number lower that by the position. Yes, it's lower by Ashley Jean's position. So we eliminated the position. We reduced the offset that was covering that position. Yep. But we've hired a slightly more expensive administrative assistant, and therefore, the taxation total on salaries has gone up by six nine nine three. Yeah, the the ARPA offset is. Minus sixty four eight sixty four, which in your original was Ashley Jean's total salary. She was three up from the bottom. So let me ask an, a naive question. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say there was thirty thousand dollars in offset that you took out. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know what the number is, but let's call it thirty thousand. Where where did it go? In other words, money is being spent. Mm -hmm. So this, so I'm not sure. So this total, the the only offset that I've removed was was um, also removed from the salary up here. Ashley Jean's position is gone, and so I removed that total also from ARPA as well. So we no longer have the expense, nor do we have the offset. But but we also removed the medical reserve corps offset. Yep. But that was then added to that same amount that was medical reserve for is now in is now being offset by ARPA. So that's why the only increase down here is that Laura Muncy increase. Okay, so got it. Have the, have the number of permanent employees gone down in this department or gone up? Down. So when the when the ARPA money goes away, how many positions will go away? We've got so right now in there's um, two and a half positions that are funded um, through through ARPA. So um, yeah, unless other yep, two and a half positions. It's the health compliance officer, the public health nurse, and um, the second public health nurse. Um, okay. If if I could share my screen, I could put the four before and after. That that'd be great. Up. 
Okay, is it okay if? Uh... Yes, please. As long as Tarek Tarek has has the um, throttle there. Okay, can people see that? This is from the budget book, and the second one's what I just grabbed from from Julie's book. Thanks, Alan. So, so this number, the seven seven six three one five, is like sixty thousand less than the original eight thirty four one eighty six. Right. But then the but then the offsets are significantly lower, so the bottom line is a little bit higher. And it's actually you can see three up from the bottom, Alan, on your top on that top graph. You see the sixty four eight sixty four. That was that had been Ashley Jean, and so that is gone. Right. And so that's also what the offsets are reduced by. So, so originally you had 10 full-time equivalents and now you have nine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and in both cases, you had 2.5, um, let me call it uh, ARPA funded positions that will go away when the ARPA money goes away. Right, well, and, and actually, that, yes. Yep, that's, that's on tape. That's being recorded. Remember that. Unless they find other funding, you know, unless we've got another funding source, certainly, but you're right, ARPA dollars are not forever. Okay, thank you. So, um, did you have anything else you wanted to say on that, Julie? Not on Health and Human Services. Does anyone else have any questions about the change in the salary levels in the Health and Human Services that were um, uh, motivated by these various changes that Julie just described. When I say anyone else, I mean finance committee members. Al Tassi, did you have any question? Nope. Okay, so the amount of um, the changed amount of six thousand nine hundred ninety-three dollars has been moved and seconded uh, after a motion for reconsideration in this department. Is there any other um, discussion? All right, so on the salary change, Grant Gibbian? Oh, yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? He's not oh. Ellis. Hey, Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Karif Daria? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Uh, Jonathan Wallach's not here. Uh, Shailene Crawford? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. Andy LaCourt? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. William Keller? Yes. El Tasti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. Thank you. That was the unanimous vote on the change. The next uh, uh, subject is the proposed expense increase in the Civilian Advisory Board um, expenses, which shows up in Health and Human Services. Am I right there? It showed up in, in diversity, equity, and inclusion. Charlie, could I interrupt for just a, a second? Uh, uh, Julie, the, the links in the PDF that were attached to an email don't really go anywhere. So if you could send me the documents that you're showing on the screen, just to make sure I have the right numbers to go into the budget, I'd appreciate it for all of these, all of these changes. Thank you. Andy, I'm sorry, what I didn't hear what you said. Uh, so the changes to the Department of Equity, the, the Division of Equity and uh, Diversity, Equity and inclusion yeah that's in the entire health and human services right but you know we voted it in sections and so we voted yeah. health and human services yeah. is one thing and we just fixed that so this is expenses in, expense, in, okay so you want to say it's expenses in dei i, I agree with that yeah okay we need a motion um so i will make that motion for discussion purposes fifteen thousand so dollars twenty five thousand is what the i'm sorry twenty five thousand i misspoke yep. twenty five thousand Increase 
expenses for the DEI uh, budget be used by the civilian advisory board uh, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, is there a second? Second. So it's moved and seconded. So Julie, would you like to proceed with that? Sure. So uh, this was something that um, Adam had known the committee was um, looking for some funding to establish um, this board. The select board had has only just recently in the past couple of weeks um, endorsed the committee's recommendation. So um, that's what you see before you the $25,000. They had um, initially been requesting some staffing. Uh, and so, you know, this, this was um, our support of the um, request for helping to establish the, the board, though, though falling short of adding, actually adding a staff person, um, but looking to provide some money uh, to potentially help with um, some, I think, programmatic work and then um, potentially some, some staff support. So um, this is, there is a Warren article on this um, civilian advisory board in the Warren, correct? That's correct. And there's no appropriation in that Warren art. Right. So um, I, I believe the, um, we, we had deliberated whether or not we needed to have a hearing with the civilian advisory board proponents. Mm -hmm. um, but decided that there was no money in the article. But now you're telling us that there's money in the article. I think the question was whether or not it was going to come up at town meeting as to whether or not they're maybe needing funding to be able to do this work. Um, so it was also an anticipation of that um, conversation during town meeting. Okay. So uh, any questions? For, oh, I see hands up all over the place here. Um, let me start with Annie LaCourt. So I have two questions and perhaps they would both be answered by holding a hearing with the um, uh, proponents of the Citizens Advisory Board article. But my first question is, do we have some detailed estimate of what that $25,000 is gonna be spent on? Like in other words, is, can it be justified line by line in terms of what they anticipate the costs of establishing this board are? And then of course the corollary to that is this $25,000 annually? Is this an increase in the operating budget or is this $25,000 as a one-time amount of money to be spent to establish this board? And then my comment on that is that if it is money related to the establishment of the Citizens Advisory Committee, it should have been in the warrant article. And I don't know whether or not it is still possible to insert it into that article and treat that article as an appropriation, but that would have been the appropriate way to do this. Unless you're talking about creating a permanent increase in the operating budget, in which case we should be discussing that. Thank you, Annie. Anything else you wanted to say on that? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, Al Tossi. Yeah, I've, for, for the first time in a long time, I think I agree with Annie. Um, but uh, there's no appropriation language in that Warren article. Therefore, we can't appropriate money because the citizens haven't been forewarned that there's money in this article. So that's, I, I think it, uh, Annie's right. It should have been there. Uh, so the, the citizens not only know we're gonna, we might do this, but it's gonna cost money. So, so that's my first point. And my second point is um, we, the finance committee is one of the three main reporting bodies to the town meeting. And our total budget is only $12,000, including five and change uh, for, for staffing. Um, we meet pretty much you know, two days a week for two to three months uh, and we get all this work done. Um, I can't believe this committee was going to have more than three issues to deal with in a year. Um, so I think $25,000 is, is a ridiculous amount of money. I think what we should do is, is appropriate zero 
the town manager and the select board can come up with some money out of their $30 million budget uh, to support uh, this committee in its first year. And then they can put together a budget and, and come back for an actual budget. Um, and a third point is it's a little bit presumptuous for us to start putting money in a budget that town meeting has not even debated yet need, uh, and not even made a decision. So I, th I think we should uh, uh, pass on this or vote, or vote zero. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Shailene? Yes, thank you. Um, I was wondering if someone could shed some light for someone like myself who hasn't followed this through. Uh, where did the select board come in? In, in endorsing this? And was that the point where the 25,000 got um, proposed? How is it that the warrant article with no financing attached to it, and yet we're hearing the select board endorse this? I just, I, I, I haven't been watching the select board meetings, so I'm not clear on how, like where, how did we get where we are? And whether the select board is somehow requesting the money, which I think goes along with what Al just said, how can we approve a budget when this committee hasn't even been sort of formed yet. I don't know if anyone can comment on that. Um, Julie or Sandy? Um, if I might, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, so I think this Civilian Review Board is an idea that um, has a lot of support in town. It's taken a while for them to meet, decide, what they wanted to do. They came forward with what I would say as a balanced set of recommendations so that the police department can continue to run itself and we can maintain our uh, systems of discipline and accountability through the chief. Uh, also at the same time, um, I think there have been questions generally uh, in our society about police accountability and that's how this um, Civilian Review Board came about. Uh, when the Warren article went before the select board, as Al correctly said, it was there just for the establishment of the board based on the recommendations of this committee that was formed. There was nothing in there uh, about money. Um, and so it, it could not and be voted, no money could be, have been voted by the select board at that time because there just wasn't anything before them to do that. Um, so then I think it was Adam's decision to recommend this $25,000 based on conversations that he had had with some of the committee members and with the police chief about a possible range of costs. It might be that they need to hire somebody on a, a part-time basis. It might be that they need to have, um, software to keep account of, um, of incidents and the things that they uh, want to look at. Uh, it might be that they need to put out a report. His estimate was $25,000. I don't think that that necessarily means that that would be a, a, an ongoing cost at that level. I think there's some startup costs there. And then I think a year from now or, or next fall when we're evaluating the needs of the committee, we would come back with a recommendation to finance committee and to town meeting for an amount that we think is an ongoing level that would be necessary. Um, so with all due respect to, if I may, Al's suggestion that you appropriate nothing, I would instead ask you to uh, give this committee the money to get started and, in, and make sure that next year when we come forward, there's amount of money in there that will really be necessary for ongoing expenses. I hope that answers your questions. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, that that helps a lot. I am. Um, it helps me a lot to know that Adam is behind. That Adam is in favor of this, because I respect Adam's opinion tremendously. Um, and that I just wanted to say to the committee that I personally am in favor of supporting this civilian review board. Thank you. Thank you, Shailene. Um, Dean Carmen, you had your hand up. Yeah. Um... It seems to me that we've sort of, how do I say it? So in math, like one of the foundations of math is the order of operations. And, and it seems to me that we're sort of 
trying to say here that addition comes before multiplication, right? Um, historically, what we do is committees and commissions or boards that want to be created go before town meeting and they have a vote. I mean, we have a, um, a rainbow commission that went before town meeting for its creation. And after it was created, they then the following year came back for an appropriation. Um, with all due respect to the unelected town manager, um, what he's doing is he's essentially asking us to be a political. He said he's asking us to endorse a budget for a committee that hasn't been voted by town meeting. And we can say that it's received favorable feedback, which I guess is a kind way of saying town meeting's opinion is irrelevant and it's, it's a rubber stamp, but I don't believe town meeting's a rubber stamp. They're a duly elected legislative body of this town and they have a right to decide up front whether a committee like this is going to exist. <laughs> And then after they come into existence, they can come back and they can ask for money like everyone else does. You know, the, I mean, we, we seem to like for the first time in, in town history seem to be skipping the order of operations that we've, I mean, I could, I could go through like five or six groups we had come into existence and we didn't give arts and culture a whole bunch of money before they existed. I mean, we've just kind of thrown caution out the window. So to me, it's like, hey, good luck to them with their article for the creation of the Citizen Advisory Board. They get it passed and they come back next year and ask for an appropriation like everyone else always has. Thanks. Thank you, Dean. Andy, second time. Yeah, um, it's very, very hard to get Alan, Dean and I all lined up. Um, uh, but we have managed to do it. Um, I, I think what, that what is this a comedy hour here? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, I very much support the creation of this committee. Um, but the honest way to do this would have been to include an appropriation in the article and have the appropriation uh, be part of what town meeting was voting on. Since we can't do that at this point then I fear that voting a budget for it, as Dean said, is putting the uh, uh, cart before the horse. But also I'm not willing to vote on a lump sum of money without seeing a detail of how the, what the plan is for spending that money. Um, you know, I, I, I understand that we often vote, you know, a budget for consultants to do a project. Okay, but you're talking about some combination of startup money, maybe some personnel time and maybe some software and I want to know what that is. Um, uh, so I, I just think it's either come back later with an actual detailed budget or let us vote the existence of this committee and um, uh, figure out what the startup costs are. And, you know, the, uh, the town manager can either fund that out of um, whatever is not used elsewhere in DEI or, or in health and human services, or the committee will have to wait until they've established an actual budget and have comfort to us for an appropriation for this to get funded. Um, I mean, we have a special town meeting in the fall where this issue could be re-raised. I just can't vote for a blanket $25,000 for something that may not even get established. Thank you, Annie. Sandy. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing your opinions there. I, um, I would just ask a couple of questions or maybe make a couple of suggestions. Um, one is, um, and, and make one representation. Certainly if town meeting votes against establishing this committee, then it would be our position that we would not want this 25,000 to go forward and it should, certainly could be cut from the DEI budget. So I guess it's a, somewhat a matter of timing what comes first, the, uh, the Warren article or the, um, or the budget. Or if in fact, the budget comes first and the Warren article second, then the budget maybe is amended later. I, 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 I'm just asking those questions. Um, Second, I do think that there is a lot of community interest in establishing this board. And I would hope that 
it would have some funds to be able to get work done now instead of waiting a year from now. Um, I think these issues are very much in the forefront of a lot of people's minds. And um, so anything that we could do to allow this uh, committee to have the resources to move forward would be helpful. Third, I know there was some discussion among the finance committee about inviting uh, the committee to come forward and present its ideas. Um, I think that would be an, a good idea uh, and would humbly suggest that that might be a way for you to get answers to some of your questions. Thank you. Just to make an observation, Sandy, we can't invite a committee here that doesn't exist. Well, the committee does exist. There was a, a committee that was formed by town meeting to make recommendations on the form, formation of this citizens advisory board. The board does not yet exist. That's the Warren article, but the committee- That's right. The committee does- I'm referring, to the, I'm referring to the board. Yes. Exist. So the committee has made recommendations about the structure- Okay, Sandy, Sandy that's enough. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Alan Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. As a sort of a parliamentary question, we have a separate article that's committees and commissions. Would a, if this was next year, would a board uh, fit into that article rather than in the DEI budget? Um, that we'd have to figure that out. I mean, I think. Okay. Well, then my second uh, question is the, the, you know, that article was written you know, the entities included herein without limitation and or take any action there related here to it's article 56. It's probably after that. If if we decided to go ahead and if town meeting accepted the creation, would it be better to amend the vote on the committee and commission article to add something in there rather than in the DEI budget? Next year, you mean? Well, or, or this year, if, if in other words, you know, let's say town meeting voted to create it, and then we have a FinCon meeting at 730, and then we amend our vote on the committee and commission, would that be parliamentary? You know, would, would that be well, it would an be, appropriate way to do it if we decided to do it then? Okay, I think it would be messy, and I'll explain why in a couple of minutes. Okay, thank you. Daryl. Um, Yes, I just I just want to go on on record that you know as, as Annie was saying I, I support the creation of the board, but to fund it this way um, just seems completely backwards, and I I couldn't support support doing it this way. If there's a way of doing it um, the right way, then then I could. Thank you, Daryl. Grant. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we postpone this until we uh, hear from the committee. I would second that. Uh, so there's a motion on the floor to postpone this uh, budget item until I think we have to give it a date certain uh, because we're at the end of uh, almost at the end of March. And um, was the date that uh, Tara mentioned then that, that they requested? What is what's that date, Tara? So I have not heard back from them yet. I will I will follow up yeah. with them. I wonder if there's some confusion. So I, I, yeah, I'm following uh, up with them now. I would say that it has to be uh, by the 28th of um, March. Amended the motion to the 28th of March. Is there a second? Second. Okay, um, the, Mr. Chairman. I think the schools are in on Dean. Dean, hang on one second. Um, so, um, Al Tati, you had your hand up. Can't hear you, Al. You're in mute. I'm just, just going to make the point that we have committees all over this town that operate and do very important things with virtually no money. The capital budget is a good example from 1980, uh, uh, 1986. We've appropriated zero dollars for it. They've had hearings, they created budget book, and they did the work without any money versus not $25,000. You know, there is money that, that Annie mentioned from IT, from the police budget, from the manager's budget, from the selectman budget. They could get some money uh, and staffing from there for the next year 
and get everything done uh, and then come back with a, with a real numbers uh, next year. Um, and uh, I was going to make the motion to for no action, but uh, Grant beat me to it. Well, it still can be made. You, you, it's possible. I mean, it's not. We haven't we haven't voted to postpone this article. I make a motion for no action. Second. Okay, so we have um, a motion to postpone and a motion for no action. Okay, now any other uh, comments or questions? Dean, I'm, I'm sorry, Dean, I didn't mean to cut you off before. No, no big deal. School, the school committee's in on March 28th. So if we hear them, and I think they don't come on until 8.30 because of other things before them. So I will just- We have, we have, a, very, we have a very busy schedule between now and the end mm -hmm. of the I just want everyone to know. We have the school department. Okay, any other, um, great. Alan Jones. Uh, again, just a clarification. Would this, and maybe this isn't the time to decide it, but would this be more appropriate in the committee and commission article than in the DEI budget, regardless of the number? Uh, this, that's a, a philosophical question, which you can't have when you don't know anything about the committee. Okay. Okay. Uh, Grant Gibbon? Yeah, I, um, again, um, just would like to give them maybe an opportunity. Uh, it's unorthodox, but at least to present some sort of budget about how the money is going to be spent. And then we can vote on that. Um, but uh, that was just my reason for postponing it. But uh, um, I'm okay with moving ahead with uh, whatever the committee wants to do. Daryl? Um, so from Tara's um, earnest uh, text, um, We've had this request out there since uh, what was it, March 11th, Tara? Yeah, I'll I'll follow up with them. It, but, I'm wondering so if that's been out there. That's been out there for 10 days. So I don't know what the best way of um, of encouraging them. If we do mm -hmm. vote on Grant's um, motion, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what's the best way of actually getting them to? So Tara, who did you reach out to? Wait, 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 wait. Annie, you're not recognized here. Sorry. Are you uh, done, Daryl? Yes. Okay. I've lost Annie. Are you? Oh, there you are. Did you have your hand up, Annie? Well, I do now. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Tara, who did you reach out to on the committee? I reached out to Susan Ryan Vollmer, Sanjay Newton, um, someone with the initials LBJ, whose name I can't see because of the way that the M name mm -hmm. mail system works, Jay Flattery, yeah. Jay Harvey, Clarissa Rowe, who was, whose emails I was able to access from the town website who are on the study committee. I'm, I heard that from Susan Vollmer that she received the email, but I have not heard back on actually scheduling with them at this point. Okay, so she hasn't suggested a date. Uh, no, and I'll follow up now and I will be copying. Um, so, Tara, wait, wait until after the meeting is okay. over before you- Okay, okay. Yeah, I think we, we've got a- I mean, Okay, so uh, any other questions? No. All right, so I'd like to make a couple of comments here. Um, I'm totally aligned with um, with uh, Annie and and Al and um, Dean and others who uh, I, I I think that there is no reason why this committee can't meet and figure out what its goals its mission its goals are its mission will be and what steps it wants to take. We don't know who's going to be on the committee. The the committee that exists right uh, the board I should say who's going to be on the board the group that exists right now is a study committee. It's not, it's not the computer, uh, uh, sorry, police uh, civilian advisory board. So um, I, I, think, I think this is completely out of the proper sequence. Secondly, um, it's not the end of the world if this organization doesn't get an operating budget until they've actually thought about what they're gonna do and understand how they're gonna spend the money and what they need it for. And we don't have the slightest idea of that. And I think going before town meeting 
even if we meet with this uh, study committee and voting a budget for a, for a board that does not exist is just the wrong thing for the finance committee to do. It's the wrong posture to have in front of town meeting. And I, I also think that they haven't responded to us. We're at the end of our uh, period here. And um, for all we know, they may not have responded because they don't know who the board is either. So, um, you know, my, my sense is that um, this concept is, is ill-founded and we should uh, not vote this $25,000. So um, with that, uh, I think I will uh, take the roll call on the last motion that is in front of us, which is for uh, no action. And if the no action vote fails, then we'll vote on uh, postponing it until we meet with the, um, um, if, if we can arrange a meeting, meet with the study committee. Charlie, before, it's a shame. I just, just shame. Sorry, um, just want to make sure. So there are two motions right on the table. One is for no action. Yes. And this oh, will be the- No second on the no action. Is there a second on the no action? Yep. Second. Second. Okay. So it's seconded. Yes, Shane, go ahead. Thank you. So there's, so the, you're gonna, you're, well, you're queuing up a roll call on the no action. And then you said, depending yeah, on how- if, if we vote no action, then the postponement is- Moot. Moot. The next, no, the next, right. No, if we vote yes on no action, then the vote is not moot. Wait, I said if we, I, I mean, if we vote no action, the postponement is moot. Indeed. Okay. I got it. Thank you. All right. So the vote is uh, the, the motion before us is for no action on this. In other words, vote no on this expense budget. Um, Grant Gibeon. Vote no for no action. Wait a minute. Yeah. Vote the, yes for no let me action. This. Let me rephrase this. Right. No, a yes on no action means that we're voting the budget down. A no on no action means that um, we are going to consider the motion to postpone, okay? So Grant Gibeon? No. Jane Blundell? No. Uh, Micaiah Healy? No. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Padaria? Yes, no action. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Jay, um, uh, Shailene Crawford? No. Daryl Harmer? No. Andy LaCourt? No. Alan Jones? Yes. George Sir? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? No. Dean Carmen. Yes. David McKenna. Yes. Okay. So we have um, in favor of no action, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In uh, voting against no action, which would lead us to considering postponement, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. So um, the um, we voted against this expense. Um, so now we can go back to um, Julie. Um, the next item is the fifteen thousand dollars for the DPW department. Am I yes, that's right. Okay. So. Um, that amount is, well, why don't you explain it again? I know you gave, give us a, since we may have forgotten through all of this long discussion, if you could give us a minute. Sure. Sure. So um, as you all know, the DPW building is under construction. This um, has taken away the fuel pump that the DPW typically uses for the vehicles. Um, the increase, to their spending in this line, the auto gas and oil, um, we're seeing now. So, you know, after us putting the budget together, it's it's already quite high. 
they are planning, they're going to be spending uh, more than what we had budgeted for fiscal 22. It looks that way already. So this was um, a, an increase to this line to be able to account for what we anticipate will be increased costs in 23 and um, until the DPW building is complete. Thank you. So, um, George Cosa, would you like to make a motion for the $15,000 additional in the DPW budget? Is this in the, um, which division is this? It's in highway. Okay. And I believe it's budget uh, 5213 going from 170,000 to 185,000. I'd like I'd like to move that. Is there a I second? Don't know if we need the new taxation total or not? I think it's a simple number. Is there a is there a second? Second. Um, so it's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on this item? Okay, we'll go to a vote. Grant Gibbon. Yes. Shane Blundell. Yes. Uh, Makaya Healy. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Arif Padaria. Yes. Sophie Migliazzo. Yes. Shailene Crawford. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Yes. Andy LaCourt. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. George Koser. Yes. Bill Keller. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Wanda Nascimento. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And David McKenna. Yes. That's uh, unanimous for the $15,000 for the DPW. Thank you very much. So um, thank you, Julie and Sandy for uh, putting up with this uh, rather lengthy discussion. Uh, and I'm sure you want to call it a night, but I'd like to ask for one more uh, item since you're here. Um, and recently we had a discussion about the snow and ice budget. Maybe you could just update the committee on the status of the snow and ice budget. I can do that or Julie, do you want to do it? Sure. Um, so you're wondering where we stand for 22 or for 23, Charlie? Uh, for 22. So um, as of right now, uh, Sandy and I were just looking at it the other day. Um, they have encumbered um, the remainder of their 22 budget. But in fact, after we talked to um, Mike, they are um, going to be able to turn back to be able to liquidate some of those encumbrances. And so I think they believe, Sandy, correct me if I'm wrong, there'll be 20,000 under, I think, for the toward uh, through the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, I, I think they're still trying to work out that final number, but yes, I think they will not spend their entire snow and ice budget in 22. It's supposed to be a wintry mix on Thursday night, so you, you may not be that lucky yet. Well, I'd rather you said that, Charlie, than you said we're not going to have any more snow because that would guarantee that we would have more <laughs> snow. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you want to... Um, Bring up tonight, Julie or Sandy? I don't think so. I do want to say we appreciate the committee sh sharing its understanding of town meeting and the process. I think we always learn something when we come here and we appreciate the time you've given us to discuss these issues. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. I'm sure the yeah. committee feels you're welcome as well. We appreciate your time too. I'll, okay. I'll second what Sandy said. Thank you. So, um, let me do my agenda here. Good night. Good night. Here we go. So, the next item. Oh. Well, uh, the next item is the. I was going to ask them to talk about this special town meeting, but they're gone. So, um, I I can only say that I believe there will be a special town meeting, and um, I was hoping that we would have the warrant before now. We don't have it, so um, hopefully we will 
have um, the warrant for the special town meeting before we write the finance committee report so that we can do all these things together, but we'll see. Um, the last item then would be to discuss the warrant articles not requiring a hearing. That is the mostly boards and committees that have not asked for a different, you know, an increase in their budget and for whom we are, we're not gonna have a hearing. So uh, Tara, do you have that summary sheet? Uh-oh, hard to read here. Uh, better? Yeah, that's better. You have to go down to where the dollars are. Yeah, okay. Um, so, all right. Let's see here. Let's start with, well, this is all one article, okay? So we just, um, let me get the one. Are, are we voting on, are, are you all voting on things like the, yes. um, sorry, what? It's, 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 it's the boards and commissions. Ah, article. article 56. Okay, yes. Um, so with 56, um, we have a tab for this. Um, and so far, that's what I'm, okay, good. Yeah. Precisely what we want. Okay, yeah. Okay. So um, no one, two uh, commissions asked for an increase or, or committees, um, and that was the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture, which we already um, heard from, and then the Arlington Historic Commission, which is still being scheduled. Um, Joanne Robinson said she was going to be sending you a letter. I followed up with her. I still haven't heard back on that. Okay, so um, now the um, the Water Bodies Commission is a separate article, right? Yes. So okay. So, so, so no, no, no. Just stay where you were. Stay where you were. So if you can just select all those numbers. Um, from, from line three down, yes, okay. So the total amount is, is it, can you, is it 30? Oh, 91,000, no, yeah, $91,175. Okay, so um, I would like to entertain a motion that the board commissions uh, that are, shown here in the, in this um, spreadsheet that are that's on our SharePoint be approved for ninety one thousand one hundred seventy five dollars um, with the yes so should I include what the Arlington Historical Commission had last year in case they don't actually no I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna no okay gonna sorry. Include it. so um, for $91,175, with the exception of the Arlington Historical Commission, which we will come back to. Um, actually, you know, Tara, your idea is not bad. What, what did they have last year? One sec. Twenty six sixty. Thank you. Twenty six sixty. Okay. Okay. Make a little total at the bottom there, um, Tara. Okay. So um, if uh, if they decide to come in and want to ask for more money, they can do that. But in the meantime, we uh, I'll entertain a motion for. $93,835 for the boards and commissions in article uh, 56 as listed here on the screen. So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second. 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 Moved, second. moved and seconded. Any discussion by members of, oh, uh, Alan Jones? Well, I, I, I was just looking at a note here for the recycling committee that says something about they want more time to study the budget. And I didn't know whether, if you know, Tara knew anything about that. Um, let me check. I guess we'll, they came back. I guess we'll be coming back, back anyway. So, yeah, let me just double check. But they came back again later on, and I can get that 
specifically one side. It did. Okay. Um, if you scroll over, there's a note there that sort of says they're not done yet. Yeah, but they have to come back with a number. I mean, we can't wait forever. Oh yeah, uh, sorry that I yeah. Let's well, let me just get the actual email where they say that. But yeah, they came back on um, Larry Slotnick came back on February 28th and said that they're fine with continuing with the three thousand. They thought about it and then they came back and said, no, we'll just keep the same. Sophie, you had your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, I understand these are all uh, repeat numbers, but for the new members on the committee, can anybody um, give us a brief summary on the Disability Commission, that 25,000? Um, I know in the discussion we just had on with Sandy and Julie, we were talking about wanting line items or wanting more details on the same number. So I'm wondering, do you, does anybody here have something to give the new members so we have some context? Um, I don't have anything to give on that. Does uh, Alan Jones, do you have any recollection? Um, well, I know at one time they gave us a budget. I was just looking to see in the budget book if they broke that down at all. It would probably be something in the annual report, but they certainly wouldn't have gotten that much without presenting a budget. Um, we, yeah, we can look at our records and find that. So, uh, Sophie, do you want to put a hold on that? Um, no, I, I'll just research it myself. I just, I know. mean, if you, if you would, I'd be fine to, it'd be very good for the committee if you just went out and researched the contact information to find out what they're spending on it. Yeah, you know, I contacted the commission on a different issue a while back and never heard anything back. So <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be successful the second time around. But um, well, that might be a reason not to vote the money. Well, that's why I was, you know, when we do this sort of no increase, so let's keep going because there's no increase. I'm just wondering how, you know. I, yeah, know. I, I understand the question and it is a significant amount of money. It's not, um, it's not the recycling committee. So, um, does anybody on the committee has any committee talked with this uh, disability co commission recently? No, and I'm trying to remember what we. They did come to us for an increase at some point, and there was a very good reason for it. But for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. I think it had mostly to do with their ability to, like, manage. Uh, uh, outreach to the disability community and to, you know, possibly do some enforcement or some, you know, I, they were running their mission on a shoestring and, and I think we felt it was important to support the mission, so. Which we don't know if they're doing or not, right? Well, true, we don't unless we, I mean, maybe we change the rule to we hold a hearing if it's more than $5,000. Well, um, Al Tassi, you're, you're mute, Al. Got to keep remembering this. Sophie makes a very good point. I think we should vote A through L, because we've already voted the 35 for the Arts and Commission, except for D. And uh, asked to uh, get a breakdown of the budget within the next seven days from the Disability Commission. Um, is that a motion? Yes. Is there a second? Okay. Second. So it's. Uh, can you make? Uh, can you make the uh, get that sum, uh, Tara? Subtracting the thirty-five thousand and subtracting the twenty-five thousand. Well, that should be easy. That's uh, four. That's. Uh, uh, 25 and 35 is uh, 60,000, right? All right. So it'd be uh, 33,835. Yeah, 33,835 is the amount. And are you including this um, historical commission's um, amount? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, any, Al, Al Jones, do you still have your hand up for, for a reason? Oh, okay. 
Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, so the total vote is for uh, 33,835. Uh, 835. 835. 33,835. 835. Grant Gibeon? Oh, yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. Um, Micaiah Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Arif Federia? Yes. Sophie Migliazzo? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. George Coaster? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. And David McKenna? Yes. That vote is unanimous. Uh, the two, the open um, uh, issues there are basically it's item D, right? Yes. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, item D. Okay. So, um, Sophie. Well, actually, Tara, why don't you send an email to the chair, chair of the uh, commission and say that uh, they're tell them their, their budget is in jeopardy if they don't come. If, I mean, their uh, um, appropriation is in jeopardy if they don't come back to us with a budget. Seven days. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, that's the last item on the agenda um, tonight. Is there anything else that anyone wants to bring up? Charlie, were there other things on the regular warrant articles that you were looking to include? Things that we needed recommendations for? Well, they're not, if they're not scheduled tonight, we're not going to discuss them. So we can talk about that. Okay, gotcha. If they're not on. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, could you give us a, maybe a sense of uh, future meetings uh, as far as the number? Um, Right now, I'm targeting that we end by March 30th. So, Charlie, have we voted all the sort of boilerplate articles yet? Um, like stabilization fund and. Pardon me? Stabilization fund. No, no we haven't. We, we'll do that at the end. We always do that at the end. OK, just checking. Well, we haven't got the school budget yet, you know, and um, we haven't done the insurance. So those things, we, we need to get those big budgets. Out. We have the water and the big, the big issues right now, are water and sewer, insurance, school budget. Okay. Do you want to save a meeting in like the middle of April in case the House Ways and Means Committee does something weird? Um, I think we can do that. That's a good idea. Maybe the 13th. Uh, when is Easter? The 18th. Is it, so the 13th is a Monday? No, it's a Wednesday. They usually come out on Wednesdays. I think we should do, do it on Monday. You, think, you don't think the budget will come out until Wednesday? Well, the, the House Ways and Means traditionally releases their budget on a Wednesday. But is it the Wednesday in the middle of April? Yeah. Yeah, that's the House Ways and Means Committee. They release it probably Wednesday the 13th, and then the members have the next week to analyze it, and then the House votes on it the week after that. But we can't they get, wait that long. But they're not going to. They're not going to. They're not going to do all that over the Easter uh, period, are they? No, they'll study it, and they will. Uh, then the full House. We'll vote it on, on the 25th, the last week, but that's too late for us. Um, so we'd have to go with whatever the House Ways and Means Committee does.
we've usually been pretty close. I don't think I've ever, I ever remember having to actually have a meeting after the House Ways and Means Committee votes, though we've always scheduled one. Okay, um, we'll we'll schedule one then for the thirteenth on your recommendation now, with the fervent hope that we don't. Have Someone usually offers an amendment for last minute tweaking by the chairs. That's true, and he's he's here tonight too. So as long as he's going to be here for the rest of the, rest of the next week or so, we we know he's going to be here on the twenty eighth. Absolutely. Okay, um, anything else this evening? Motion to adjourn is in order. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, moved. Difficult, difficult issue tonight, but nonetheless, we got through it. So um, we'll see you all.